Hey friends, it's Elizabeth here from the Everyday Storyteller, and in this video I'm going to show you my process for two of my pieces of the past layouts. So the first one that I'm going to be working on is um, the first prompt that Allie has for pieces of the past, and that is to document your family of origin. And I am going to be working in the pieces of the past traveler's notebook that Allie offered, and I'm also going to be using the hexagon scrapbooking kit. So as you can see, I am cutting out one of the large 12 by 12 papers. I cutting out um, I think it was three hexagons from that paper and in just a moment here I'm going to be popping on over to my tabletop and telling you more about my process for these hexagons all right so I always get a lot of questions about how I print on physical products so I thought I would show you um, I feel like you can barely see it here on this paper, um, but I printed out the digital versions of the hexagons that I'm going to be using um, in my layout. Um, if you buy the physical version of any of Allie's scrapbooking kits, you get the digital version for free. So I just um, cut out one individual hexagon from the 12 by 12 paper digitally in Photoshop. And then I paste it onto an eight and a half by 11 canvas. I pasted two of them because I'll be journaling on two of the hexagons. And now I'm just going to match them up. So here you go. Hopefully you can see that they, they pretty much match up perfectly. Um, I'm just going to use a teeny bit of adhesive to adhere that down. I'm going to adhere both of those. And then I'm going to go back and run both of these through my printer again. But this time I'm going to um, just print out the journaling. So I will be back to show you how that turns out. All right, so as you can see, this worked out really perfectly. Um, these are attached to the paper with this Tombow Mono Adhesive. So I got this from Hobby Lobby. I believe it's called a glue eraser, but I've seen it at Michael's and Joanne's as well. Um, and I'm just gonna use this on the back to make sure there's no residue on the back of my hexagons. So my thought for these hexagons is to kind of mimic what Allie did in her subscriber day video. Um, one of her process videos for the subscriber day was using these hexagons um, to add some hidden journaling to a page, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. Um, as you can see, I stacked all of those hexagons together, one on top of each other, and now I'm just going to be working on adding the embellishments. So um, that wooden hexagon piece is part of a nesting um, hexagon set that was included in the hexagon main kit. Um, how many times I said hexagon there? I don't know, but I am just going to be adding that to that top page um, with some red line adhesive just to make sure that it attaches very strongly. And then I'm going to also add this little piece of chipboard from the, I believe that's the friends story kit, um, the one with the flowers. And then I'm also going to be adding a uh, tiny chipboard phrase sticker that says through thick and thin. I'm not sure where that one is from. The next step in my process is to create the holes that I will add the brad through. And I am just um, doing that on top of a piece of the packaging and using the first hexagon as a guide to poke holes into the rest of them. And then I'm gonna be using these mini brads, one of these mini brads, to attach all three of those hexagons together so that they can swivel on the brad. And then I am going to add it to my uh, layout. So here I am cutting out my photos. I have two photos, one of me and my mother, and then one of me and my grandmother. And I'm going to be adding that to the top and bottom squares um, on the right side of that page where it says family of origin. And uh, once I am done trimming that out, I'm going to be moving to the left side of the page. I really loved the muted colors in that pastel hexagon paper, um, and I decided to use it for this layout as a background to my journaling. So I am just adhering that onto the left side of the page. As you can see, I'm adhering it first and then cutting it down afterward. Um, I'm not good at measuring things very well, so that just helps make sure that everything um, goes to the edge and looks good inside of the traveler's notebook. 
And once that is adhered and cut down, I'm going to use some red line adhesive to add my hidden journaling booklet onto the page. So this does add a little bit of bulk just because of the fact that there's wood veneer and also a brad on there. But I really love how it looks. You'll see um, the finished page right here. I'm showing you how it swivels and I really love the way it came out. All right, so the second prompt is most loved toy. So I actually printed out a bunch of uh, pictures of toys that I loved when I was a kid. Um, these are just screenshots from the internet. So I just like, for instance, looked up uh, 2000s, 1990s Felicity and just saved the photo of Felicity because I had Felicity as an American girl as well as Samantha and uh, Kirsten. I was very into American Girl dolls. Um, and I just uh, printed all of those out on one piece of paper. Uh, I believe this is eight and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then I'm just going to add that to the left side of my page, add my photo to the right, and then um, add some journaling down here. So let's get to it. So I really appreciated how Allie chose to mix up the prompts between those that could be a little bit more serious and ones that were really fun and lighthearted. And um, I have to say that I really loved journeying back into memory lane to figure out which toys I wanted to include. Um, as I was looking through some old pictures and everything, I remembered so many more toys <laughs> that I wanted to add, um, but those were definitely my favorites. And those were the ones that I decided to include. So as you can see, I'm pretty much following exactly the steps that I laid out in the very beginning. I'm adding the photo of myself to that top right corner, and then I'm going to be adding the large photo with all of the toys on there to the left side. And then once I am done adhering that down and trimming it, I'm going to dive into my stash and look for some number stickers. And as I was doing this, I realized that I do not have a lot of number stickers. I really loved the set that Allie used in her project, but I only had the white version and I felt like the white on white didn't show up very well. So I ended up using one of these older uh, number sets from Allie in black. I believe these were offered a couple of years ago and they're a slightly different font than she uses now, but I still really love the way that they look. They're very graphic. And I just added them one, two, three, four, five to each one of um, the photos. And then I'm going to go over onto the right side and um, add some journaling. So I chose to do the journaling on my computer. As you can see, I printed it out already. I just measured it and then um, created a box that fit that size in Photoshop. Printing my journaling always seems to work the best for me because I always end up having a lot more to say than I think that I do. Um, and it, it just helps the layout stay clean and I don't really like my handwriting. So that's another reason why I like to um, keep it to printed journaling. So now I am just looking through my stash for some number stamps because I'm going to stamp the numbers over on that right side next to each one of the journaling blocks. And I thought I was going to use that one uh, Allie Edwards set, but I end up going for something slightly different and choosing these circle numbers from the Play Story Kit stamp. So um, I've had these in my stash for a really long time. I'm not that much of a stamper, so I actually had never used the Play Story stamp before. Um, so this is my first time using them, and I really love the numbers. You can see me stamping them out next to each block of journaling. Um, I am using Stays On Black Ink, and since this is the first time using the stamp, I make sure to, um, to test it out on a scrap piece of paper to make sure that I'm getting good coverage. They stamped really well, and I was really excited for that because I, as I said, am not that great of a stamper. So I was really happy that this turned out well. I even messed up on the three a little bit, and I was able to re-stamp without making too much of a mess. So that's definitely a win for me for this layout. And I'm just kind of eyeballing uh, where I'm going to cut this journaling and stamping out. So as you can see, I'm making some marks and figuring out where I want the journaling to be in that spot right there. 
So once I have my journaling adhered to the right side of my spread, that is my second layout complete. So I really enjoyed documenting these pieces of my childhood in this notebook. Um, I did not think that I would, so I'm really excited that I embarked on this project anyway. I encourage you that if you're feeling a little bit um, anxious or worried about how to respond to these prompts, that you give it a try as well. And um, I hope you enjoyed these process videos. I'm excited to share more as this week progresses. And um, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day. Bye.